Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can display images stored in the database in your Power BI report. Stay tuned. If you're finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the videos from both Adam and myself. So done video on images and we were getting images from like OneDrive or a web server or the cloud, like Azure storage. In this video, I wanna talk about getting images from your database. So instead of pulling those images from some location, they're actually stored in the database. And yes, people still do that. Cause somebody asked me that question and I was like, Think you can do it i'm not sure and then i was talking to my buddy casper and casper was like yeah yeah chris webb's got a blog on it go read this blog and in fact i did read the blog and so i'm using i'm borrowing i didn't steal chris's stuff i'm borrowing some of chris's stuff i actually talked to chris but chris kind of built on a couple of other blog posts by sql jason and gearhard and i'm going to reference those throughout this video and if you take a look in the comments below you can see links to all three of those you guys know what i like to do instead of all this talking let's do what let's head over to my lap so let's imagine this. Let's go over into the query editor and you have this table. And if you're using AdventureWorks, there's uh, images in both the sales territory and the product table. I'm just going to look at the sales territory table. So you have this table with the binary stored in it. And that's my actual image. If I click close and apply and go back over to the desktop and you look at my sales territory table, you won't see that column. You won't see it at all. Power BI just kind of ignores it. It's like, ah, binary, I don't know what to do that. I'm not even gonna deal with it. But you can make Power BI deal with this column. There's just a few things you need to do. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. Just to deal with it as it is, I'm gonna duplicate it because I wanna hold on to this binary. But all you need to do if you wanna use it, just let's go ahead and duplicate this column. And we're gonna call this image to text. All right, we're gonna call it image to text. I'm gonna take that binary and convert it to a text. Click close and apply, boom. So now it appears, okay? So this data is down, these images are stored at the region level in this table. So I'm gonna make a quick table here. There we go. And I'm gonna add this image to text to it. And you see it's just a lot, a lot of text, a lot of gobbledygook. And you're like, well, what is this? Well, this is the actual image converted to a text. Now, if we wanna see it, all we need to do is, and you can do this back in Power Query also. In fact, both, I think SQL Jason and Gearhart talks about doing this in Power Query. I'm gonna do it in DAX, cause I just kinda like DAX, okay? All right, and so we're gonna create a new column. And then all you need to do in that new column is a new calculated column. And then I'm gonna paste this in here and you can see I'm using that text, but I'm concatenating this little data colon image JPEG base 64 to it. I'm gonna categorize this. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna go to format and choose data category. And I'm gonna categorize this as an image URL. And so we'll collapse this little formula bar. And now we're gonna drag this onto the table and boom, there's my image. And it just works. And you're probably looking at this like, wait, Patrick, didn't work. It's just a piece of the image. That's not the whole image, dude. What are you talking about? There is a challenge doing it this way. And Chris Webb talks about it in his blog. And I think everyone, you know, who's written blogs on this, they, they basically talk about this. There is a 32,677, something like that character limit when you do this. And so you can't pull in the entire image, all the text for the image. So you got to work around that solution. And this is where I was talking to Chris Webb and Casper and Chris Casper was like, Chris, it's this great blog. And I read Chris's blog and I was like, ah, oh, this is perfect. But there was one slight challenge with Chris's blog is that Chris was pulling the images from his local machine and taking the binary and doing everything there where I'm trying to pull the images actually from a database. So I had to modify Chris's Power Query up a little bit just to accommodate the question that I was asked. Let me show you. If you take a look at these images, you can definitely see it's only pieces of the images, but I need the entire image. So we're gonna head back over to the query editor and you'll see I have this function. And this is actually what I borrowed from Chris and made some slight changes to it. So the first thing I did was I parameterized this up and we'll talk about these parameters um, when I invoke the function. And the next thing, the next change I made was you can see right here, instead of pulling it from images on my local machine, I'm actually bringing it in from a table that I have imported into my model. And then this just kind of follows in line with some of the things that Chris did, right? He converted the table to a list, then he created a splitter function. And then this is actually, you see, I put a comment right here. This is where the magic happens. It converts the binary into text, then it splits the image into 30K rows. Basically what happens is because of that 32,000 limit, instead of
of trying to store all the text on each row, he actually has a row for each one of my keys. So my sales territory table, you know, I have a, a region and so I'm breaking it down for each one of those regions. And then you can see the images are kind of broken down that way. So I have 30,000 on each row. Okay, just stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how to bring it all back together at the end. So I use this guy right here. It takes each row as an input and then I'm passing in the actual binary column, the name of the region, and then the sales territory key. And I'll show you how I'm doing that. Then I convert the binary to text. Then we use the splitter function and then we add this information to the row. And then we use this convert to loop over each one of the inputs, right? Each one of the items in the row. And then we combine it, convert it to a table. Then we add this index column. And this index column is used use later on and I'll, I'll explain that all right so we're going to click done so now that i have my function created if you head over to the table that contains that image you need to know some important things so the way this is created the functions where i'm accepting the input it's all based on the position of the column and the way it works is it's zero base so your table may contain three columns like mine has multiple columns so i need the binary and so i need to pass in a number for that binary the location of that column so it's zero one two three four and then i need the key which would be zero and then i want to return the region so let me show you something let me go over to this function and let me show you so if we go back into the function you could see i'm accepting the z base uh, the zero base position for the binary the zero base position for the name and the zero base position for the key and down here in the function here's my binary where i am accepting the input here's the key this is where i'm accepting the key for that and then here's the name so you can change this if you don't want to pass in the region name which i really don't need i do need the key because i'm going to establish a relationship and i'll use that in my model but i don't need the name i really don't but i'm using it for debugging purposes okay so let me show you how i would invoke this so you need to grab those positions remember to grab those positions four is your binary zero is the key and yours may have different positions so we'll go over here we'll select our table which will be sales territory and then my binary is four my key name is one and the actual key is zero so we're going to click invoke and boom what you'll see here is that for my northwest region there's two rows because i had to break that image up into two rows if you go down here to the united kingdom you can see we had to break that into three rows okay and we had we've added the index all right so now let's click close and apply because we want to get the full image Image. We don't want a piece of the image. We want the entire image on our report. So let's invoke this function. And here's our function right here. We're going to rename this. So we'll call this region picks and we're going to create a nice little measure. And you might be thinking to yourself, a measure? What are you talking about? Hang on. We're going to create this nice little measure. And so basically it, we need to make sure the first thing we're saying is, hey, make sure there's one value on that region because we're only, we're only going to display one image and we add the same prefix to that text, right? That we're going to pass in. And then we use concatenate X over our region picks table to concatenate that split, those 30,000 splits into one value. And this is where we need the index because we need to make sure we put that image back in the right order. So we'll go ahead and click okay here and then you you guys remember probably like i do that they allowed us to categorize our measures not too long ago so if we choose our measure then we need to categorize it as an image url and then watch this i'm going to drag it over here and now look at there the entire image what this is great thanks jason thanks gerhard and thanks chris webb for all those great blog posts kind of help us put this entire solution together there is a limitation that chris talks about there's a limit of about 2.1 million characters that the dax functions can accept so if you have more than that you could run into some limitations there i think it's great it's a great solution if you're storing your images in the database be careful because these images can definitely blow out the memory they can take up a lot of space so don't just go do this doing this all willy-nilly you know think about what you're doing okay got any questions comments you know what to do let's continue the conversation we're in the comments below your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel hit that subscribe button if you like my video give me a big thumbs up as always from adam and myself thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video